King of the Mountain. Welcome to the first King of the Mountain tournament here in the 2020 season on the 3D Botmaker Diecast Racing League. Builders from around the world have modified and sent in their cars, all with one purpose in mind, to be the King, King of, of the, the mountain. mountain. Let's go ahead and get right into it with our first two racers. We have Say Cheese versus the Dollar General Levo. Zoe C will be driving in Say Cheese. It's a Monte Carlo NASCAR weighing 114 grams. Driving the Dollar General Levo is the 2018 King of the Mountain, Terry Hill. He is of course driving in his signature 2008 Lancer Evolution, weighing in at 106 grams. You know, based on the qualifying, Zoe C does not have a chance in this race, I'm sorry. Yeah, just look at Terry Hill way out in front. And I know the fans are wondering, wasn't that car orange when it first raced? Yes, it is a color shifter. When it first took the track, it was a little cooler out here. Now that warm California weather is really kicking in. Speaking of kicking in, Terry Hill starts off this race with an impressive time, 16.190 seconds. Uh-oh. I'm not quite sure what happened to Zoe C, but she has flipped over on that last corner. I think it's pretty safe to say this race is probably over and done already. Hey, you never know when it comes to King of the Mountain, but yeah, it's over. There also seems to be a change to the General Levo's roof. What's going on with that? Uh, yeah, Terry Hill was so fast in the qualifying round, he actually picked up a sponsor, Dollar General. Wow, so it had nothing to do with the- Nope, he just got a sponsorship. Also, mention Terry Hill's name at checkout when you're at Dollar General the next time. Oh, cool, is there some kind of discount? Uh, no. And there goes Terry Hill flying through with the Dixie Horn as he picks up his win and advances on to the next round of King of the Mountain. Yeah, that really was not much of a race. Hopefully things will pick up as the night goes on. Yes, that was a solid performance though by Terry Hill. Uh, he had that bad wreck at the end of the qualifying race. Oh yeah, the worst wreck we've ever seen. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, make sure you go back and watch that video. Okay, let's keep this party going. Up next we have Mr. Toad versus Bishi. Mickey Fumes will be driving in Mr. Toad. It's a Lamborghini Gallardo weighing 66.7 grams. His car's on the lightweight side, but he did get a 17.3 second time in the qualifying round. You can't judge a car on its weight alone. 213 Racing is driving in the Bishi. It's another 2008 Lancer Evolution. This one weighs 88 grams. The Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution seems to be the car of choice when it comes to the King of the Mountain. 213 Racing out in the lead. Mickey Fumes right on his tail. He's losing it. Mickey Fumes is gaining and passes Whoa. on the outside. Amazing pass by 213 Racing and he picks up his first win. Oh yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. That right there is what King of the Mountain is all about. Mickey Fumes takes the win. Picks up a 17.830 track time. Meanwhile, 213 Racing was left out to dry on the side of the track. Let's take one more look at that pass. I don't know what happened to 213 Racing's car, but right there he lost control. And just look at Mickey Fumes with that amazing pass in that Lambo. I think that maybe the first time we've seen a driver pass like that on the last corner in this entire season. Hey, this is King of the Mountain. These are modified cars. This is tournament time. This is when things really heat up. Mickey Fumes and Mr. Toad starting on the inside lane this time. If he can win this race, he'll be moving on to round two. Mickey Fumes off to an early lead. 2-1-3 not far behind. Here they go around the first corner. 2-1-3 racing passes in the Bishi. Mickey Fumes now trying to catch up. Let's see if 2-1-3 can control his car right here. They're going to the last corner. Mickey Fumes not far behind. And it looks like this one's gonna go to 2-1-3 racing. Driving in the Bishi. Another good race right there and it's all tied up. 2-1-3 racing has the faster track time with that 17.414 second time. So he will get the inside lane advantage on the tiebreaker race. You know, we finally got some good action here in the modified series. It seems like the Bishi has the speed but the Lambo has the control. It's very smooth on the track. If Mickey Fumes can take this right here, that's gonna be a real upset. Here they go side by side on the track. It's a very close race. Mickey Fumes out with a slight lead. Two and three racing pulls ahead. Mickey Fumes isn't far behind. He's closing in. Let's see if he tries to pass. Whoa, right there. Two and three almost lost it. It's a close race around the last corner. Two and three racing pulling ahead and he will take the win and advance on to the second round of the first King of the Mountain tournament. Wow, that was a great race. I hope we see some more like that tonight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the replay. Tonight's replay is brought to you by Dave Akers Customs, custom cars and custom dioramas. All of the parking lots you see on this track, as well as the King of the Mountain bracket, were made by Dave Akers Customs. You know what they say, if it wasn't made by Dave, it, it was, was made, made by, by someone, someone else. else. You know, I feel like that last part of the statement is Dude, just don't mess it up. unnecessary.
Just read the I mean, script. Obviously, if it wasn't made by him, it was made by someone if else. If you're going to do this every time, I'm not going to invite you back on the show. Okay, okay. Coming up after the break, Doc Brown returns to Race Mountain. Racing by the die cast. Die, die, die cast. Build them fast, make them last. Last, last, last. We test and tune to bring that fire. Fire, fire. Yeah. We ain't gonna quit till we expire. Welcome back to King of the Mountain Tournament 1, Round 1. Up next, we have 13 Triple E versus the Gigawatt. Mr. Mike driving for Panzone Customs is driving in 13 Triple E. It's a Hot Wheels shoe box weighing 77.4 grams. Driving in the Gigawatt is none other than Doc Brown. He's driving for Dave Akers Customs in the DeLorean time machine. I feel like he has an unfair advantage being that his car runs on, what is it, plutonium or something? I think it runs on electricity, but it needs a nuclear reaction to get that 1.21 gigawatts of power. Is he trying to time travel or just win the race? Right now he's doing neither. Ouch. Mr. Mike slams into the back of the DeLorean. The dock is completely out of control out there on the track. And look at that, Mr. Mike pulls it across the finish line first. That's a slow-mo of a time, but a win is a win. I just feel like a time machine might be a little overcomplicated for a race like this. I mean, the doc is certainly... Crazy. What's the word I'm looking for? Mad scientist, out of his mind. Eccentric. Okay, but what happens if he actually hits 88 miles per hour and time travels? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, but would he win the race, lose the race? Is time traveling allowed? Hmm, that's something to think about. I guess if he went forward in time... Would his time be slower or faster? Exactly. These are the questions we need to think about before we allow a time machine to enter the competition. I mean, I guess if he went back in time and finished the race, he would have crossed the finish line first? I guess so. I'm not a physicist. Then there's a butterfly effect. Yeah, that's another thing. And that whole weird thing with Marty and his mom. Yeah, that was strange. How is that a plot in a movie? I don't know, but the Doc is doing much better this time as he goes around the last corner and Doc Brown flies past the finish line and picks up a time of 16 0.922 seconds. And for the second time tonight, we have another tie. Both drivers have one point each. Doc Brown with a faster track time, so he will get the inside lane advantage on the third and final tiebreaker race. Let's see if the Doc can get that thing up to 88 miles per hour. Okay, so big question. If you could time travel, what would you do? I think I'd go forward and skip over 2020. I think a lot of people share that sentiment. Doc Brown pulls ahead after that first corner. Mr. Mike not far behind in 13 Triple E. The Doc is all over the place. Let's see if he can hold on to it through the last corner. A tap to the sidewall, but he straightens it out, and Doc Brown will take the win for Dave Akers Customs in the Gigawatt. He didn't have quite enough speed to time travel, but he had enough speed to win. He's in town. You know, that's a catchy song. Why, thank you, 3D. You know, I'm working on my music career. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm looking to start a group, 2D and the Diecast Racerettes. Oh, wow, that's uh, interesting. Last up tonight, we have Stylin versus Blizzard. It's a battle of the vans, res wheel driving in Stylin. It's a Honda Odyssey weighing 99.6 grams. McClyde is driving in Blizzard, a Ford Transit super van weighing 103.3 grams. Both these drivers set a very similar track time during the qualifying round, so this should be a good race. Right now, Res Wheels is out in the front in the Honda Odyssey. They're going around the first corner. He still has a lead. It's a very close race right now. McClyde only behind by maybe two or three car lanes right now. That gap's getting a lot bigger. He's still chasing him down as they go through the last corner. It's going to be close. And Res Wheels picks up his first win with a track time of 17.928 seconds. He had about a three car length lead over McClyde. We've got a couple local celebrities in attendance. I see Crazy James and Crazy Jimmy out there supporting the King of the Mountain. You know, it's nice to see the professional drivers coming out to support the street racers. Yeah, the Crazy Brothers are two great guys. Here we go, Rez Wheel starting off on the inside lane this time. If he wins this race, he will be moving on to the second round of the tournament. It's a close race, they're side by side now. McClyde pulling ahead of Rez Wheels. Here he goes to the mid second of the track. Watch out, whoa! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh my! Oh man, that was that right there is the worst wreck we've seen. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm man, not that sure was... if the worst wreck in King of the Mountain history, Whew. but the definitely the worst wreck of this season. Oh yeah, that's not good. McClyde, Steve, falling down off the side of the mountain. Steve, is the EMT coming? It's just a. Uh, the move. This thing is serious. It's one of those solemn moments in racing where you... They can finish the tofu later. It really puts in perspective of how dangerous this sport is. Look at that right there. It looks like Rez Wheels did make contact 
with McClyde's van, but that definitely was not his fault. Oh good, they finally got out there. The emergency medical response team is out there. Uh, we've got the tow truck. Still no word on the condition of McClyde. The wind does go to Res Wheels driving in Stylin. And speaking of Stylin, check out the 3D Bot Maker merch store. Dude, is it really the right time to be doing that? I mean, we gotta eat, right? Uh, that's a good point, proceed. Support the channel and look good doing it at the 3D Bot Maker merch store. We do have King of the Mountain shirts. Hey Steve. The new Crazy James shirt is now available. Tell the designer we need a rest in peace McClyde shirt. We've also got- ASAP. Let's take a look at the bracket for round one so far. We have Terry Hill, 213 Racing, Doc Brown, and Res Wheels all advancing on to round two. Coming up next time on King of the Mountain will be the second half of Tournament One, round one. Is the mic off? Did we get any word on his condition? Yeah, it's not looking good at all. Man, that's tough. Yeah. That tofu was good tonight, oh, though, wasn't man, it? Oh, man, it was delicious. Bunta was just doing it. How was my voice tonight? Was it was it good? I oh, felt yeah. like it might be a little... I don't no, know. it was fine. You sounded great. How about the Dollar General <laughs> Lee, huh? That was hilarious. Have you ever tried manscaping? You know, I just saw an ad for that.